you. Now, their life's going to change in a matter of hours for you yeah. and for your lovely wife, and it's going to change for at least one other person as well, and that would be that'd be me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because for almost thirty then I'm years, off tomorrow. you are. <laughs> Have I mentioned I, that to you? Today? Yes, you have. Yes, <laughs> Daryl and I have shared the same space, the same cubby hole, the same office. In some respects, thirty years seems like yesterday. But then again, in reality, let's face it, it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Nineteen eighty-four, Dale Earnhardt was on his way to becoming a legend. Very few baseball fans had even heard of Tom Glavin. John Smoltz wasn't close to being a household name either. You see what I'm saying here? Nineteen eighty-four. That's when I came to Chattanooga, Tennessee and started working alongside Daryl Patterson. What a ride it's been, an interesting ride. I could sit here and share stories with you for uh, about 10 hours. Let me send just a couple of stories your way. Back in the days of Engel Stadium, the Lookouts held a media game in July. Certainly not a midsummer classic, but you get the picture. Halfway through the game, former Channel 12 sportscaster Chip Tarkenton hit Daryl in the head with a baseball from about five feet away. Not good. Tarkenton did not have the athletic prowess of his Hall of Fame uncle Fran. Daryl had a lump the size, well, a lump the size of a baseball on his forehead for two weeks. And then there was the putt-putt contest. For whatever reason, all three local sports directors gathered to battle it out on the plastic turf. I covered it like a golf analyst would and should. By the way, love those tinted glasses. At the time, they were my trademark. Anyways. I was actually hoping that Daryl would lose. I thought it would be fun to give him a good ribbing. Well, as fate would have it, Patterson proceeded to whip Will and Randy like a couple of rented mules. So much for that, I had to switch gears. Daryl, you were lucky out there tonight. No, Dave, you're wrong. And anyone who has followed my golf game over the years knows that you're wrong. That was an inside joke, and I suspect that's something that both of us will miss. The familiarity, the inside stuff, the inside knowledge, the comfort level, if you will. For example, when I say that I saw Benny at the game tonight, Daryl knows exactly who I'm talking about. All I have to say is I'm going to talk to Touchdown Teddy. Daryl knows. When I answer a question by saying, huh, who, what, what, uh, quarterback, Andy, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, Andy, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Daryl knows that could only be one man. And when I walk in the door and say, uh, well, Daryl, Daryl, you can't turn the bottle over. You turn the bottle over four or five times, you're going to get beat just about every time. Daryl knows that voice comes from only one head coach. But I believe the biggest change will come in stability. For 30 years, when I walk through the door, I've known who's sitting in the chair closest to the back. That ends today. It'll take me a while to get used to that. Maybe a long while. <laughs> Maybe never. Daryl, my friend, congratulations. You made it richly deserved. Enjoy your retirement. I'll see you at the clubhouse. 945 T is always good. Barry says he's in. Call your brother. See if he can play with us. <laughs> oh boy, we had the stories there. Remember Cheyenne Golf? Oh yes, sure, oh you yes. Get done with the show at 11:30 by 11:50 in the old building downtown. Had those plastic hallways cups down cut through in the half. hallways. We had cut an into the general hall. manager's yeah, up, office up and the put stairs, out. stairs, yeah. down, around, through doors. And nobody knew it. Thankfully, we did it at exactly. night. Exactly. Yeah. There to about yeah. two in the morning playing golf. We wouldn't have had a job. Uh, probably so. <laughs> You're probably correct on that.